This is Salesforce Simplified, the podcast from Ad Victorium Solutions. Here's your host, Mike Boyle. So here we are in January 2021, and it may not be spring anywhere in the northern or southern hemispheres, but come February 12th, 2021, it will be spring, I promise you, across the entire Salesforce universe. Hi, thanks for joining us for Ad Victorium's Salesforce Simplified Podcast. You know, Salesforce does this three times a year. They have these seasonal update releases to their org, uh, winter, spring, and summer. So for this episode of Ad Victorium's Salesforce Simplified Podcast, we're solely going to focus on talking about the Salesforce Spring 21 release highlights. And joining us for this edition to talk about some of those highlights is Ad Victorium consultant, Aaron Shambly. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me back. Yes, absolutely. We've had you before to talk about these releases. Uh, last one was uh, the Winter 21 release. Now we got you for spring, and we'll probably have you for more others down the road. So what I first would like to ask you this time is, can you talk a little bit about how for folks who don't know, how Salesforce goes about deciding what to include in each of these releases? And that, that's a great question. So, I again, I don't work for Salesforce itself, so I can't say their specific process, but they do a lot of really deep QA and testing before it even gets to what's called a preview state. And so that means that you'll get these updates pushed out to test environments or they'll even reach out to certain customers to ask them if they'd like to try something if it's you know a new really large feature something that isn't a simple update to functionality but something they want to kind of beta test and refine as it's in development so what they'll do is they'll generally speaking push these out as a preview and if there's anything where there's a potential concern for maybe a disruption of existing automations or a disruption of any of how anything that works today, they'll put a notification in that it's marked as a critical update. Generally speaking, critical updates will have a much longer time before they're enabled, but Salesforce is really good about getting that uh, notification out in front of you if you're an admin, so you know everything that's going to be changing and you can test it well in advance by going to your testing environment and enabling the critical update before it's actually pushed out to production environments. So that's kind of just a look behind there. But generally speaking, most things coming out, you won't run into many issues with just because their team is so good at QAing and making sure everything coming out uh, will work with what's already out there today. Gotcha. I've always kind of wondered that myself. Uh, kind of along the same lines here, how, how do you personally go about sifting through all of Salesforce's releases? Are, are there specific things that you look for when you dive into a new release? So the way I go about it is Salesforce already breaks up the release into the different products. So when you go into the release notes, if you're sifting through that giant uh, web page and trying to go through it, you'll see sales, service, and then uh, billing or some of the other side add-on products. I like to start with the big ones. So the products that just about everyone in the Salesforce ecosystem is using, I like to start with just basic sales cloud and service cloud. They're really the core products in my eyes. And so any updates there are going to be huge as it's going to have the largest impact on the most amount of customers. From there, I'll go down into the various add-on products, whether that's CPQ, the quoting engine, field service, Salesforce Maps, etc. I like to just start at the top. And then when I pick a highlight, I'll generally see, you know, in here, is this a feature that I, in my experience with consulting, customers are really using? Is this something that is going to be a highly visible change? And that kind of works into what I pick as a highlight. And of course, anything where on the configuration side, the customer might not see it or whoever is using uh, the implementation. But you as the 
the builder, the architect is something that you need to be keeping on your radar as a new tool to go in your toolbox. And so that's kind of how I look at it. Well, we have actually, you have selected six highlights from the Salesforce Spring 21 release. And we asked you here today to talk about them. So let's just start with number one here. It's called Add Walkthrough Steps That Go Beyond New, Edit, and Clone Pages. Tell us a little bit about that one. So this is really my number one, because if we think back to what I was kind of describing as how I like to pick these out, this is a change that's highly visible to end users. Whenever you change something in Salesforce, you know, you may send out an email just informing your users of a change. But now Salesforce is making it so the in-app guidance now has some new functionality so that you can actually walk a user through the an entire end-to-end process. This is huge because many times it, it's one thing to watch a training, but it's another to, as you're going through your process, your actual day-to-day work, be able to see a little blurb saying, hey, make sure you fill this out or just a heads up user, we've made some changes in this area. So be on the lookout for this. And you'll now be able to really guide users and bring attention to the things that you've changed. So it's big, not just for the being visible to the user, but you as the admin, the consultant, the developer, you're able to kind of help guide towards what you've built out to make sure that everyone's involved and understands what's changing. Now, the next one, and actually it's the next three, are centered around Salesforce's field service. So number two here on our highlights of six is plan ahead with advanced maintenance recurrence. What's in that one? So the next few will be around the field service package, which is dedicated towards handling and Uh, dispatching your service techs that are out in the field and making sure they have optimized days. Spring 21 has some really exciting updates for this package, which is why we've got half of our updates here that we're highlighting for this package. Uh, The first one, as you mentioned, is the plan ahead with advanced maintenance recurrence. And that, that can sound like a mouthful. And believe me, it is a mouthful. But what this means is that The field service package, which generally, as I was describing, is about technicians going out, installing or servicing things, will now be able to uh, deeply customize the way maintenance plan schedules can be set up. So think to yourself, uh, you know, maybe you have someone come out once a year to look at something they installed. Maybe it's for an HVAC unit. You know that you need to have monthly maintenance, but you don't want someone to sit there and use their time to manually create, you know, work order one, go out in January, make another record work order two for every asset. Now, with the advanced maintenance recurrence, you'll be able to really tweak the logic for setting things such as the time that you want this scheduled. So maybe you want it the first of the month, then you want to add a little leeway because your team is, uh, you know, coming to terms with handling COVID and everything else, you'll be able to even put in a, a buffer of making sure that that work order is handled, you know, maybe the first week of the month rather than just having it create one on the first of every month. So this is a huge win and will save so many field service uh, customers time in that you'll now just be able to, at the creation of a maintenance plan, really schedule and plan out where you want these recurring maintenances to occur. And so it's just a huge time saver and a really exciting feature coming to field service. And staying here in the field service realm, if you will, number three on the list, get smarter travel time estimates with point-to-point predictive routing. Yeah, so this goes back to another highly visible change. Uh, In the field service app, one thing it'll do is try and optimize the schedules depending on how it's been set up. There's a myriad of rules that you can put in to make sure it really fits your business. But the routing would sometimes take into account, depending on how you set it up, uh, as if you were a bird's eye kind of flying from point A to point B. But now it will use 
point to point predictive routing where it'll factor in things such as the time of day and the exact appointment location when calculating that travel time for the optimization. Mm. As a company yeah. based out of Atlanta, we, we, we know all about traffic here. So having it actually factor in the time of day is a huge win for the package. Totally understand that. Number four on the list, and again, the last one here in the uh, field service realm that we've been talking about here for the last three. Um, I don't know about you, Aaron, but I think this one is just phenomenal if you're a customer. Notify customers when workers are arriving. So this this really is bridging some of the final gaps in the field service package. Essentially, you'll be able to set up an appointment assistant that can send a text message to the customer, uh, letting them know that, hey, you know, the worker is actually about to arrive and you can set that up with some automation in the back end. But especially in today's uh, COVID world, it, it's really great in that the customer can then know uh, the rough ETA of the mobile technician so they can make any safety precautions they need to handle and just so they're aware and they don't miss their appointments. So there's no surprise when someone comes to knock on your door, you know, to service that HVAC unit or what have you. Uh, I, I think this one's awesome from a business perspective as well as, uh, again, just being another tool in that toolbox that's going to be highly visible. Yeah, so no really doubt. exciting stuff here. Yeah, no doubt. That's a welcome one. Number five on our list of Salesforce Spring 21 releases is refer to the prior values of the record that triggered your flow. What a mouthful. <laughs> no kidding. But this is really exciting. So a while back, Salesforce introduced what they called record, record triggered flows. And that just means that you no longer need a process builder or some other kind of automation to kick off your flow. This update specifically is going to let you reference the values that your record had prior to entering that flow. So this is something that was previously kind of tied to triggers. So some real uh, non-declarative development. And it's just an extension of Salesforce improving their clicks, not code mentality. This just allows you to have a lot of increased flexibility. So if you have some really advanced business logic, uh, you might be able to now handle that declaratively where previously you would have to use uh, code such as an apex trigger to reference a prior value and do some calculations. So it'll make everything a lot easier to maintain for maybe a day-to-day -day admin that's not as big on development skills and It'll be a much, uh, a very well received piece to have um, for that toolbox as these record trigger floats are going to continue to evolve. And Salesforce is really committed to adding some exciting features here. So I think this will be a big one for the future as it continues to develop. You mentioned uh, flows a little while ago. Uh, number six in the final highlight that we have for Spring 21 is debug failed flows more easily. Tell me about that one. So this one's, from my perspective, one of the most exciting uh, updates in Spring 21. And I'm sure admins at any company will really resonate with this. Prior to... Spring 21, you would just receive an email and it would be a very long email depending on your process of every little piece of your flow that a record has gone through and eventually at the very bottom, the thing you care about, where an issue might have occurred. With Spring 21, you'll be able to open up in Salesforce a copy of the error and it will actually highlight on the sort of graphical interface where you see your flow, it'll show you the path that your record took. So it'll be highlighted for you and then show you where the error occurred visually. And this is a huge win because when you're really building out some intense automation, there can be a lot to go through to really arrive at where something might have happened. And so with this, it'll help you at a glance know, okay, the record I'm looking at, it went through these steps and eventually landed here at the end to quickly identify an issue and resolve it. 
So this this is a huge change that really everyone that's building out Salesforce should be excited and really be looking forward to hopping into. A lot of huge changes here in uh, Spring 21. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. This has been uh, very educational. Um, and uh, can you believe that it won't be too much longer when you and I'll be back and we'll be talking about summer 21 release stuff. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait to see how Salesforce tops this one as Spring 21 is really exciting. Wonderful. Thanks again. And we'll look forward to you joining us next time. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about Salesforce's Spring 21 release, just visit our Salesforce blog on our website. It's advictoriumsolutions.com. And I'm also going to put a direct link to that blog here in this show's notes and some other information about Salesforce releases uh, in general. And if you like what you heard here today on our podcast, please be sure to tell your friends to subscribe. We're available wherever you get a podcast. And uh, we're also now on Amazon Music and Pandora too. Those were just recently added. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, I know you, I ask you every time, but please, we really would appreciate a five-star review. Thank you for doing so if you've already done so in the past. But for this particular episode, we'd appreciate a five-star review too. Helps us get the word out about this podcast. I'm Mike Boyle from Ad Victorium Solutions. Thank you again for joining us for our latest edition of Salesforce Simplified. Our next episode is just around the corner. You've been listening to Salesforce Simplified, the podcast from Ad Victorium Solutions. 